Good morning, everyone. Today is Saturday, December 11, 2021. This is Coffee and Crypto. Well, not a whole lot has changed, although the bloom is off the rose a little bit in a lot of these. I am seeing some improvement, so this is changing quickly. So not too much has changed. One thing I've been talking about quite a bit is using Ethereum and, of course, Bitcoin as possible bellwethers. And I'll show you that in just one second. 30 EMA appears to be your best friend. We'll talk a little bit about Landry Light. Playing RS breakouts when the tide is moving. When these things are moving, it's like taking candy from a baby. It's just absolutely wonderful. Unfortunately, as I've been saying recently, it hasn't been like that lately. I think yesterday or day before, I got one, or I had one, I should say, that hit the IPT. And before that, it's been a while. But back on Thanksgiving, I remember I hit seven in one day. So we're not in that kind of market right now. Hopefully, a word you should never use in trading, obviously, we'll get back to there soon. By the way, it's not about the crypto, and I know a lot of people don't want to do the crypto, and that's fine. The reason I'm doing this is because technical analysis and a conceptually correct methodology works really well here, especially if you use a healthy dose of money management. I heard somewhere, and I'm going to try to paraphrase, I wish, I could, I wish I'd written it down, but basically volatility is the price you pay for performance, and I thought that was pretty darn good. That might have been Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy that said that. Anyway, RS breakouts are beautiful when the tide is moving. One of my tide gauges used to be when I had a smaller database and I would sort by a percent change. And if most everything was red, there was no green, kind of like you see it now, then I know that it's not a great market. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, but since I've enlarged my database to about 700 or so, of these there's always some green out there so you have to be careful not to get too sucked into that one thing i was thinking about right before recorded is maybe come up with a list of pairs that are worth watching as far as maybe by capitalization size so obviously you want bitcoin ethereum litecoin and yeah, just any of the generic not the non-generic ones i should say any of the ones you could think of off the top of your head and maybe make that small watch list and go through that list and see how much is green and how much is not. Solana would be another one. Maybe sort by market cap. Go to crypto.com or one of these other websites and do that. But when everything's blowing and going, the RS thing is just amazing. The 30 EMA, again, could be your best friend, as I've been saying quite a bit. One thing you can look at here, if you have ACP, is look at the Landry Light. Uh, stock charts is working to get more and more pairs in here, and I've been bugging them quite a bit, and they're they're enlarging them, but it's a it's a process because there's a lot of things that have to happen for that to happen. But they are working on that, just FYI. But if you look at the Landry light, you can see this tells you if the highs less than the 30 EMA. All this red in here, you just want to avoid a market that's red, and maybe think about markets when they're green, or only think about markets, I should say, when they're green. So let's take a look at Bitcoin with this indicator. In here, by the way, somebody did create an indicator for trading view too. So I'm working on that to see uh, to see if we can get that up and running. Let's take a look at Bitcoin real quick, and the again the Landry lights. Green is good and red is bad, and green and red is choppy. And you probably just want to avoid the market. Back here we had a 30 EMA breakdown, but notice it never triggered. That's one thing that's beautiful about this little system, especially in inefficient markets. And obviously Bitcoin's becoming more efficient, but that stupid little system can do quite well. And it's pretty amazing, especially at breakout markets. Remember back in October, November, we had fantastic markets. As I just said, hit seven IPTs on Thanksgiving day. That was fantastic. What have you done for me lately though, right, Janet? Anyway, back here, bar one, bar two, a couple of bars of green, in or about this high, so your entry would have been here. And as a general rule, use your 30 EMA as kind of a guideline on when you're going to exit this thing. So that was a pretty good run, especially if you use a little money management along the way. Now, breakouts work fantastic when markets are breaking out and following through. Now, you could argue that on the downside, it works too. I've shorted a little bit here and there in these cryptocurrencies. I'd rather go long. I think the huge potential is on the long side. And I think the downside has a lot of risk or the short side has a lot of risk. If one of these things takes off and doubles and triples overnight. If you are going to short, maybe just short the big boys when doing that. Now, when things aren't fantastic, like right now, the core methodology might be the way to go. Let's take a look real quick at my coloring scheme in here. And let's see if I could find it. So 
So blue means something I'm thinking about. Blue as in like the big blue arrow, or it's a benchmark, for instance, Bitcoin and Ethereum in here. Could also be, if it's something I'm thinking about, it could be like a pullback, or sometimes these newer pairs act a bit like an IPO. And you guys let me know if you found that too, and maybe some of the IPO stuff we do might actually work, such as the buy a deep pattern in crypto. But it seems like there is some excitement with these new ER pairs in here. So let's take a look at the rest of the colors. So blue, again, I'm thinking about it. Green is something that's a little bit better than blue, something that's very possible in the near future. I left this one green to show you, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pass on this one. I'll show you why in just one second. Purple means it's an open trade with the IPT and stop in place. Right now, just to keep the math easy, unless it's in something like Solana, which is a little bit bigger and doesn't move quite as much, and maybe possibly Bitcoin too. I'm using a 20% initial profit target, and if it's a breakout type of play, my stop is probably a little bit tighter than that. And see recent webinars for more on the money management on these things. Or of course, you can always become a member of dayliner.com for more on the money management and ask me questions in Facebook once you do. A little soft sell there, but we do have a great group of traders, and I learn a lot from those guys and get a lot of great setups from them. So kudos to you guys in the group. Anyway, Cyan means the IPT is hit, and I'm free rolling with the trailing stop. If you look at some of the posts that I made to Facebook not that long ago, and if you look at some of my webinars, this list is like just the opposite. You have a couple of that are purple, and then you have a half a dozen or, or a dozen or more that are Cyan, and that's a beautiful thing. Right now, just two Cyan means that we've hit the initial profit target and we're free rolling on a remainder. You can see this XAVA is getting ready to stop out. This one we played a couple times, or I played a couple times. This pullback here to the EMA, nice little run higher. Another pullback here, nice little run higher. I covered this one and the weekly charts and also in my stock charts show. KOK was a little bit of both core methodology and breakouts. And I like them when it happens. And back here we had a nice tail lower on the, uh, I guess you'd call it a TKO, or is a TKO, trying to knock out, and then entry would have been here, and again, a free roll it on this one, but sometimes when they get really strong like this, and they're high, and the list percentage change day over day, I call it uh, RS, not RS like an indicator, just relative strain, you can just go in and buy them, especially if you have like a bigger picture setup like this. Of course, this would just have been a regular old breakout back here. Let's take a look at some of the ones I'm long. GALAX, you can see nice little pull back here. So far, it hasn't done a whole lot. COV, I think I talked about this one in the week in charts. And if I'd have gotten in when I talked about it, life would have been a lot better. It's a little frustrating. That's one of the things I talked about a few weeks ago. My IPT is around 80 cents or so. And again, if I'd have got in when I first showed it to you guys during the week of charts, I would, have, I would be a happy puppy right now, uh, if that's a saying. Anyway, you can see almost made it to that IPT, but not quite. You can't stay up all night waiting for these things. So that's a bit of a bummer, and I've talked about that before. Let's see what else is in here. VR is another one that's kind of a breakout, kind of also a new one, kind of a pullback. So, so far, so good on that one. Not quite to the IPT. Luna, I front ran a little bit, had a little bit of a pullback in here, and I got in a little early on that one, but I'm going to stop out maybe right below the slow. This is just kind of a stab I'm taking at the market because things seem to be improving at the time. AXC, another one of these breakout things. This one looks a little thin, so this is probably a little crazy of a setup. But you can see just kind of going straight up in here. And that's kind of the, the idea when the market is running, really running. You just want to be in the strongest ones because if this thing's at a double or triple in value, it's going to go up 20 or 30% first. And that's kind of the sort of the basis of technical analysis to some Extent. So let's just go through these real, real quick, and then we'll we'll sort of by strongest first, see if there's anything worthwhile. And again, as we go through these, notice a lot of them are below the 30. And I think if all you did was avoid the ones that are below the 30, you would stay out of a lot of trouble. This one looks okay. This would be kind of an RS play in here. Lots of tail, so it could be kind of thin in here. Maybe see if it could break out above 75 cents or so if you're looking to play that one. So that's part of the improvement that I'm seeing, that a lot of these things are beginning to rally a little bit. We won't know for sure if it's a dead cat bounce or not, but in some cases, if they're above the 30 EMA, it might be a bonafide buy signal. But again, just look at all these that are below the 30, nothing to do on those guys. This one is a little bit extreme in the pullback. You can see it's kind of coming out of this super deep pullback in here. That looks okay. Mirror is one I was thinking about, but 
On second look, it's kind of wide and loose, and there's overhead supply, and I think you could be a little bit more sloppy, for lack of a better word, when the market is really, really, really moving, and then back off or be a little bit more stringent when the market is not. And that's kind of like I got excited about that one at first, and then I said, no, let me just settle down here, Beavis implied, <laughs> and see if there's something better I could find or let the market improve a little bit more than it has. So I'm kind of sitting on my hands on that one. This is a nice little pullback. In fact, I'm actually long this one. You can see that always excites me when I see something I like and realize that I'm already long, but nice little pullback to the 30 EMA. Trying to rally out of that one. I would put all the kids' college fund in that one. Funds in that one. I'm joking. <laughs> nice little pullback here. Oh, I'm long that. See, that, that was unscripted, I promise. But nice little pullback to 30 EMA. So this looks really, really good. In fact, I might consider an add-on trade on that one or add back in to that one. But again, 30 EMA, your best friend. So I think that's pretty much it for today. Just not a whole lot of excitement. But you have to stay tuned with these things because they can heat up really, really fast. Of course, they cool off really fast, too. Any questions, www.davelearner.com slash contact. Obviously, if you had Facebook, just ask there so everybody could benefit from the answers. And we can kind of go back and forth with things. Everybody, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you so much. And may the trend be with you.